Heidi Hi campers, it's Dave from Dutch Tents UK with another tent preview. This time it is a six berth Esvo Betu. Uh, not sure about the pronunciation of the model. It's spelled B E T U W E in Dutch. It's probably completely different to how I'm pronouncing it, but hey ho. Um, so I've got this one out today to show you. I'll probably do some still photographs too with the advert, but I wanted to uh, have a good look through this one through a video. Um, let's start with the label first. You can see the name Vavat in the corner. You can see Esvo and then the, the, the typical Tenkate sign. Uh, Vavat are a camping shop and Esvo um, had made a lot of tents for them. Esvo actually made this one for themselves and they sold it through their own store but they also sold it through Vavat who put their own label on it, hence the big Vavat label. Um, I promised myself I wouldn't do, be doing too many ums and ahs in this video, I've just done one. <laughs> Sorry, I'll try and be better. So this is a really, really classic um, pyramid tent. Very rounded at the back end, very similar, in, I, I think, to a Randstad, particularly the, the Chefren or the Cheops uh, models, they're pretty rare, but this is remarkably similar um, to that. So, <clears throat> often rat Esvos are quite squared at the back, as they tend to make very practical pyramid tents. This is very practical, but it's also very beautiful. Uh, there's a few marks on the canvas which we're about to have a look at. We've got some tree sap there. Let's see if I can find an old one. These are quite fresh. If you take this tent off me, you should not touch these. You should leave them alone. Hello, oh, no, there's an older one there. So this is what they do. They kind of crystallise. And then you do that and you rub them off with your finger. And ultimately, this whiteness will bleach out. Uh, I used to think tree sap um, marks were a bit of a problem, but um, they're not. They actually... Oh, I can smell my fingers very piney. They add to the waterproofing, so the tent is particularly waterproof where the tree sap is. They will go in time. Um, unfortunately, we've got a couple of other stains there. Um, I am not sure what they are, but they're not tree sap. Maybe some, some bird poo that's been washed off. Apart from that, the canvas on this is remarkably clean. Really, really nice and fresh. It's in really great condition. If you're wondering what the ropes are down the side, the previous owner <coughs> attached the rope so you can peg out the door, pole, spike as well if you want. Some people do that. Uh, typically you just put the front guy ropes in there. Very typical Esvo at the front. They you always use these stick-on curtains, so they are held on with Velcro. If you take them off, you've got a really big window, um, and then there's another flap on the other side, which is a vent, and then you can open the doors up as well. We'll have a little look at that formation. Um, also in a minute, I'm going to put on the side wings, it's got two nice big side wings that make this thing look beautiful at the front. And then we've got the two inner uh, tents, each suitable for three sleepers, because this is a six berth tent. It is four meters wide and four meters deep. So let's go inside and uh, have a little look. So first thing we take out the curtains and you've got a nice big clear door. Then we do the other side and we've got a big gauzed vent for extra ventilation. Also the front completely opens up. And there is the door, front wall door fully open. Go inside. I know I'm not alone in being uh, in love in that star pattern. De Ward are really good at doing this on the Albatross and the Lapellas and um, but I do love it when they stitch them like that. It looks really, really nice. 
Can you see some of the little white spots, like bits of light through? Okay, that's your tree sap on the outside. There's a few of these. Uh, it's not too bad. <clears throat> There's no holes, no damage in this tent at all. Um, I think I'm quite sure that these tree sap would have been picked up from one camping trip. We've got typical Esvo deep door. I'm five feet nine and this is a good foot above me. So that's me at stretch. So they're 190 tall. King pole, 2.3 meters. Big, big, big area. You can kind of see the side of the king pole that you are gonna fit a double and a single air bed in there, no problem. And the same that side. On the floor, in the disheveled heaps are the inner curtains. Typically, um, a lot of Dutch brands, um, I'm coming again, aren't I? Esvo, Rebuta, various others, just have a skirt on the bottom. So these are hanging curtains. They're particularly good for keeping the mozzies out. Um, primarily they're there for privacy, I would imagine. They don't put the put a ground sheet on them because it just adds a little bit more weight to the whole package. They're trying to keep the weight down of these. Uh, another weight saving area for Esvos is the ground sheet. This is a sewn in model. Um, this is full PVC, just like, um, well, pretty much everybody else uses actually, except Esvo use a thinner grade PVC. Their argument being that most people will use a ground sheet protector underneath the ground sheet so they don't need to invest a lot of weight in t into big thick uh, PVC ground sheets uh, like you get in Randstads and uh, Dewards. So it makes the whole package that little bit lighter. Tent canvas is typical 10k300 as you find on pretty much everything else other than Dewards and Randstads who use a 320 gram material. Again, poles of steel, typical Esvo ones here, have sliders on the outside and then two big strong steel poles there and of course the main king pole, really really strong, um, you won't damage them, they don't bend. Okay, so let's have a little look at how this thing is with the uh, inner tent in. Just before I put the inner tent in, a little tip that works on old tents, or pyramid tents. You uh, just take the king pole, just angle it. So now the roof is well within reach and I can hang up the inner tent from there, put the pole pack, put the, put the pole back, no problem. Okay, I've put one of the inner tents in. is up there, strap around the king pole, then we have these lugs down there and then we have a uh, band there. This creates a side wall to the sleep tent. Got a nice air vent there. The material of this is a woven uh, synthetic material. But it's okay, you won't, you won't sweat in them. It's not like a, a, a close-knit polyester. You can probably even see the light through them. They're quite breathable, these. So let's have a little look inside there. And inside. So you can see the skirt around the bottom. And then the, the tent's original ground sheet. So these are very largely privacy curtains, but as I said, especially good for mozzies and midgets. Um, I think I'll just put the one in, just so you get an idea. The other one goes in the same way. I'm going to leave these inside the tent so when you unpack it and put it up, you will find these waiting for you. One will be attached, the other one won't. But bear in mind, you simply put it up the king pole there, attach the front down there, and then just work your way from the back round hooking on to your lugs there and to your tabs on the tent all the way around. Nice and simple to do. Or again, leave it out if you don't want it. You might just want to put the kids in there and you might want to keep the rest open a la bell tent. Right. 
let's pop the side wings on and have a look at it in its full glory. Now the first thing I want to say about ESVO side wings is they very typically velcro them to the tent there. There's two velcro straps, one there, one there. This allows you to create this pattern as well as having them out a little bit more to the side so it gives you some great cover in stormy weather. Side wing number one. And side wing number two. Once these are on, creates a very nice outdoor covered space. A lot of privacy and a lot of weather protection. Actually, you know, for the younger family, Really nice little outdoor play area as well, quite sheltered. Could have some fun in there. <laughs> Get your action men and your Barbies out. This tent is from the mid, early mid 2000s. It came from the original purchaser, uh, just outside Rotterdam, north of Rotterdam, not far from uh, the town of Delft in a place called um, Peachnacker. I think that's the right pronunciation. You probably gather by now my Dutch isn't very good. <laughs> um, they used it for a few years with the family, with the kids, um, and typical story, the kids grew up, didn't really want to camp anymore. So the tent has been sold on. Um, they told me they've used it for six or seven holidays. So I think we're probably looking at, you know, 12, 15 weeks, if that. Uh, I do wonder though, if some of those holidays were a week long, just by the condition. Because, you know, apart from those stains that I pointed out to you and a few tree sap marks, this thing is incredibly clean. Indeed, had it not been for those marks, I would describe it as immaculate because the marks are really nothing at all. There's another one, a little one. It's absolutely spotless. There's no tide marks, there's no... Often you find in here that um, you get tide marks in there of dirt along those seams as, as the rain runs down but not on this it really is really clean so anyway there we are there's your showcase this tent is available for 400 pounds plus 25 pound ups postage uh, anywhere to the uk mainland and I think this summer, this will make somebody incredibly happy. Okay, there we are. Thank you very much.